poetry or death by terror. Hello, I'm Steve Larkin. I am a poet. One of the reasons that I am a poet is because I want to reduce the chances of terror attacks. Intrigued? You should be. I intend to argue that using the public purse to pay for poetry activity is genuinely an effective measure to reduce the chances of terror attacks. I will back up this claim by taking you through quite a few years of my poetry career and pointing to particular pertinent examples that back up this claim. By the end, you'll understand what I mean. You may agree. If you don't agree, well, as my dad used to say, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. <laughs> so we will drop in on my poetry career in the mid noughties when this phone call happens. I see. So you've got to spend the budget before the end of the tax year. Yeah, I can invoice before the end of March. Yeah, tell me about the event. OK, so a lot of talks and slides and local councillors. We want to change the dynamic, make it uh, slightly more interesting. Fee? Uh, well, what have you got available? Yeah, 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 I think we can sort something out for that. So, so just to clarify, you want 20 minutes of poetry, you want two poets, and you've got a fee of £1,500, but no travel expenses. Yeah, I think we can sort that out. I, I, I'll, I'll send you an invoice, get it all confirmed. Danny, Danny, Islington Borough Council want to pay us £500 each for 10 minutes of poetry. Happy days. The poets are being paid. Bzzz, bzzz. What's that? Bzzz. Oh, it's the wasp. The white Anglo-Saxon Protestant work ethic gnawing at my conscience. It can just be heard over the sound of my dad's voice answering the phone to me in the 1990s with the words, Are you earning a crust after I've finished my philosophy degree and embarked on a career in the arts? I was then in that difficult stage of life. You know that difficult stage of life after you leave full-time education before before you die. <laughs> right now, the wasp stings. I cannot win. A Hobson's choice, I cannot win. Poverty knocks or guilt ensues. Either way, I feel like a sponge to the public purse. To be abundantly clear, that huge dollop of cash was unprecedented, never been paid the like since. But I wanted to demonstrate to you that I'd got to a sort of stage in my poetry career where I was commanding quite reasonable fees to come through. Uh, and that was all quite cool. But how did I get to that stage, I hear you ask? Well, I'll tell you. By doing years and years and years of work for free, setting up opportunities for the poetry community. Hammer and tongue. Poetry Poetry slams, open to all, gigs that pay, guest artists a decent fee, by watching professionals intently, learning from them, crafting, grafting, until gradually I crack it. World Slam Champion 2004, soon lecturer at Oxford Brooks. If there are any foreigners in, Oxford Brooks is the name of the university in Oxford. So... <laughs> North American tours pay dot dollar, European excursions, Euros. In the UK, poetry is sterling work, mainly workshops. Where is all this going? How did this stop terror? All will become clear. I watch Alexi Sale talking about the origins of alternative comedy. He says how in the 70s, society afforded him the opportunity to experiment. He could sit on the dole unchallenged. No, now such luxuries are only afforded to the dangerously overprivileged. Alexi introduces me to a quote which has since affected me. Tyranny is the deliberate removal of nuance. Alfred Males. Tyranny is the deliberate removal of 
nuance. Managing this growing hammer and tongue network is a bit of a pain to me, honest. I haven't got a wage, but I can really see the value of it. People really love it. It's like a subtle cultural arbiter. It's like a zeitgeist spitting parliament. The skills of performing and writing are judged at a poetry slam, but so too are the arguments. As I say, it doesn't pay, but something tells me that it'll be worth it one day. The thing that does pay, usually from public funds, are workshops. Examples. Chucky, flame-haired like the horror doll, channels anger. Recently sent to me by the powers that be, probation, the only thing that works for he has a violent temper which can't be tempered with drug or talking therapy is poetry. I've got Lottie. I like Lottie a lot. She looks like I've shot her when I take her phone off of her, but get her focused on the brilliant bars that she's written, congratulate her and get her spitting, and she's soon distracted from the electronic tag that she's had fitted. I spit a bit. I spit bile. It's just my performance style. Buzz. What's that? Oh, it's the wasp. It's quieter now. Are you earning a crust, son? Are you earning a crust? Yeah, I am. What's that you used to say, Dad? If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Well, it is worth doing, and I'm doing it well. Bang! 7-7, seven, seven, like 9-11, carnage on the streets of London. Pol pundits polarise and divide east and west, make it black and white. I try not to fall into a cliché trap with my youth work, you know, rhyming community with unity, but basically... I do just that. Don't judge me. It's a living. Don't criticise a man until you've walked a mile in his shoes. Then you'll be a mile away and wearing his shoes. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's the sound of a foreign butterfly beating its subprime mortgage wings on the other side of the planet. The consequence will be a storm on our shores for sure. Sure enough, markets collapse. Less money is going to the arts. Being a poet is now a gamble. I'm in the black, I'm in the red, I'm in the black. I write roulette tangle. If only somebody had a long-term economic plan that would secure my financial future. 2010, two elections. Oxford professor of poetry, deliberately difficult, Geoffrey Hill stands against, amongst others, abundantly accessible Steve Larkin. In the general election, David Cameron stands against Gordon Brown. Neither election goes the way I or any progressives really would have wanted. A hundred-day war on the public sector. Arts Council slashed, but the big society is there to protect you. Some bloke called Throppy and some bloke called Phil are apparently going to pick up the bill. I see a keynote speaker from the newly appointed Minister of Culture. His talk about the arts, a reminiscence on um, pink um, pigeon uh, racing in the village of uh, Farringdon. Not the arts that I or others in the room really recognise. Now I am feeling the pinch financially. Now not a single state primary or secondary can afford this frivolous pink poetry. Arts, youth and social workers appear to be going missing. This is nowhere near to being joined up thinking. A perpetual truant gets driven to my workshop door. He has found the blaze of skunkweed haze. His way to deal with teenage trauma to sit in a marijuana-induced stupor. Doesn't go to school. Doesn't have to. The only thing he's shown any interest in, in the couple of grunts the youth worker has got out of him, is rapping. I managed to hook him with a workshop that I have developed. I get him putting concepts on staves. Soon he's written page after page after page. Luke Mike Talker is born. Luke Mike Talker feels the force. Luke Mike Talker, more importantly, 
talks, goes back to school, re-engages, happier, articulate, confident, connected. I spit a bit, I spit bile. It's just my performance style and acid reflux. <laughs> I'm getting stressed. I'm threatened with unserviceable debt. Now, not a single state, primary or secondary, can afford any of this frivolous pink poetry. I am picking the peanuts out of the poo, looking for part-time work to see me through. I really don't know what to do. I like to think through parallel universes. I've got one piece of paid poetry work left. It's called Beyond Bars. It's the piece of work with young rappers and lyricists. The name Beyond Bars is clever. It's a double meaning. The event takes place in an art centre beyond the street of clubs and bars, and also the young people want to progress past bedroom rapping. The people are gathered in the room. We have no alcohol filter here, so that means we get more of the Asian population in the room. My students shine. Of course they do. They're mine. We also have an open mic. Up steps Mohammed, 17 years old in formal preacher robes. He does his poem. It's all about these disgusting whores of Babylon, how they're disgusting for having abortions, murdering, slaying innocent children. All the hijabs at the back just nod along. Well, this is exposure to views that are previously not really had, but that's not so bad. Engagement is the key, and it's come about once again through poetry. I know that if I can engage Mohammed with this group, that his beliefs will be respected, but challenged in this very room that nuance will ensue. He's buoyed by the positive reaction that he's got. He's got other ideas in his overzealous bonce. Wants to perform a regular slot. I tell him, no worries, man. The art centre has a plan to get some more funding so this work can carry on. Guess what happens next? The funding gets cut and never see him again. The young people are not spitting their thinking and no one is listening. And I am spitting. Spitting bile, the acid reflux, no improvement. I get sent for an endoscopy down the throat, unfortunately. No improvement, but luckily the GP has got a new drug for me. Now the acid reflux will be inhibited by my brain when I've got this drug inside of me. Dropping income, I am stopping paying tax and paying the credit cards back. May 2015, peaceful politician Joe Cox murdered in an act of terror. November 2015, many Parisians murdered in acts of terror. Death all around, flatlining economy. Despite of this, Hammer and Tongue still thriving. Got the national final on in a room in the Albert Hall, but the escalating costs mean that I get... Nothing at all. Usam Minhas is the latest to take the national title, uses his skillful verse and the increase in his profile to talk about that that he sees as vital, namely the everyday experiences of a peaceful Muslim in an era of increased hysteria about the threat of violence. I do a sweep of all the contacts that I've made. A teacher friend says, I'm sorry, mate, I've done my best, but the head teacher says these people shouldn't expect to get paid. Bzzz, Woody still he'll do his job if I took away his wage and other artists say we're not sure we're worth it anyway Bzzz. and the DJ at Hammer and Tongue takes the stage to do a poem that slates me and everything I've ever made Bzzz. the wasps are stinging left, right and centre the, the prejudice is being internalised people who should know better musicians, teachers on the fringe of it echoing the right wing rhetoric is this the best of all possible worlds 
I'm sorry, Leibniz, but I don't think it is. I like to project and think about parallel universes. I think about the attackers in Paris, not pious religious extremist bigots, but ne'er-do-wells with arrest for possession of marijuana on their records. Unemployed drifters isolated from society's warm embrace who were wet swept up in a wave of purpose by extremist preachers' hate. The terrorist that murdered Joe Cox, another isolated individual, sat on a mental time bomb, recruited to her evil ideology by proxy in a library. We'll never know if Mohammed will go on to be hardline or moderate in his preaching. In the parallel universe, when our, the funding wasn't cut, I facilitated wider thinking. He learnt a bit of empathy, especially from the females, giving equal voice to him. In the parallel universe, when I didn't get access to Chucky in a vulnerable time of his life, he committed another violent crime, and then another inside, and after a serious amount of time, was released a bitter man. He shaved his head and donned his hot nail boots and, well, you know the rest. In the parallel universe, when I wasn't tipped off about the danger of taking my prescription long term, which had a negative effect on the immune system, I grew weak and susceptible to diseases and died of bronchial pneumonia at the age of 43. Thankfully, I did read about it. I learnt about the vast interconnectedness of the gut system, which actually contains consciousness. I I chomped on celery and spinach on the alkaline diet for what seemed like an eternity, then added live bacteria to add to grow the stomach flora. Tyranny is the removal of nuance. Tyranny is the removal of nuance. Take away the poet from the social system and you take away the nuance and replace it with tyranny. Then we're divided and finding new enemies. So in all seriousness, and I know that my evidence is anecdotal, total on conclusions, mere conjecture, but I believe that paying a poet will reduce the chances of terror, because me and people like me are part of the fabric of society. We are the positive bacteria in your balanced gut system, the fat files on the hard drive that keep the computer from overheating. So if your call is to poetry, I implore you, put faith in its intrinsic value and the chance it will employ you. Don't focus thoughts on death and stress and early death. Ask for public money without any fear of poking that particular wasp nest. Understand what art does, because it does something that nothing else does. Vehemently, philosophically, publicly oppose such government cuts, and perhaps, most importantly, always trust your guts. <laughs>